Yeah, but where do your potatoes originally come from? And welcome back to Cliffy Land. This is weekend country number 136 on our second attempt of cooking the food of every single country in the world. And tonight we're up to the nation of Peru. Peru, located on the Pacific coast of South America, is bordered by Ecuador, Colombia, Bolivia, Brazil, and Chile. And it is a very large country. It is a mega diverse country. It is one of the origins of all civilization and every single potato in the world, in case you didn't know. They actually have more than 3,000 different kinds there. Now, the food of Peru is a delicious combination of the Amerindian tradition combined with the Spanish in that they were one time a Spanish colony. And over the past several decades, it has also been influenced greatly by the cuisines of China, Africa, the Arab world, Italy, and Japan. There are so many different dishes, it's really hard to even keep track of any specific one. But generally speaking, the traditional dishes will involve corn and potatoes and fish and beef, as well as a whole bunch of other stuff. So we have to see first how things went when we tried this whole thing last time around. Well, four years ago, I was able to cook and stream over two nights, which was really delicious. And the first night I wound up doing one of my favorite Peruvian dishes, which is called Lomo Saltado, which is a dish of marinated stir-fried beef served over a bed of french fries as well as rice and it was really great. I loved it a ton. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to do that this time. And that's kind of a shame because last time involved putting some pisco, that's an alcoholic beverage, on top of it and setting it on fire, which made a big explosion, which you can still see on the archived streams here on YouTube. However, unfortunately, we're not doing that tonight. Tonight, we're doing what we did on the second night, which also involves potatoes. First, we are making a Peruvian ceviche, which is really delicious. It is from the same site that we used our Ecuadorian ceviche. Those two things are different. Peruvian ceviche will generally not have tomatoes and the marinating liquid from it will be served in it in Ecuador, but generally on the side as tigre de leche, which is literally tiger's milk, on the side in Peru. It's considered a hangover cure or an aphrodisiac, depending on how you want to look at things. However, we loved it last time, looking forward to doing that one again this time. As for the potatoes, we're making papas a la huancaina, which is a potato dish with a cheesy cream on top. Interestingly enough, these two dishes are kind of the same exact thing that I wound up ordering at a Peruvian restaurant just about two weeks ago. So we're gonna see how that goes. It came out really well last time. We're gonna do it again this time. So now we need to see what go into tonight's two dishes. First, for our Peruvian ceviche, we'll need one and a half pounds of very fresh and high quality fish fillets. You can use corvina, halibut, escalar, hamachi, or mahi-mahi. One red onion thinly sliced. One cup of freshly squeezed lime juice from about 35 to 40 key limes or 15 to 20 Peruvian limes. One or two habanero peppers cut in half without seeds and deveined. Two to three sprigs of fresh cilantro, salt to taste, and finely chopped cilantro to taste. And for the dressing, you can optionally use lettuce leaves, cancha, tostato, or chulpe corn nuts, freshly boiled corn, sweet potato, thinly fried or baked chips or boiled thick slices, chifles or fried green plantain chips, diced or sliced hot peppers optionally, olive oil optionally, or lime slices. And then for our papasala huancaina, or potatoes with cheese, we'll need a quarter cup of lemon juice, one eighth of a teaspoon of ground red pepper or to taste, salt to taste, one onion thinly sliced, two tablespoons of canola oil, three cups of Monterey Jack or Swiss cheese shredded, a half a teaspoon of turmeric, one and a half cups of heavy cream, six potatoes drained, peeled, and quartered, we're using red potatoes here, and one to two hard boiled eggs for garnish. That looks really great. Note some of the prep work which you saw in the ingredients is actually included in the cooking stuff, so I hope that isn't too confusing. But we gotta get cooking. Go! Cut the fish into small cubes. Place the fish in a bowl and cover with cold water and one tablespoon of salt. Cover and refrigerate while you prepare the onions and juice the limes. Juice the limes and strain out any seeds. Rub the thin onion slices with half a tablespoon of salt and rinse the onion slices in cold water. Rinse the fish to remove the salt and then in a bowl place the cubes of fish, half of the sliced onions, 
the cilantro sprigs, and the hot peppers, and pour the lime juice over the ingredients. Sprinkle with a little bit of salt. To minimize the acidity of the limes, you can add a few ice cubes. Cover and refrigerate for about 5 to 15 minutes. Scrub, peel, and quarter the potatoes. Place the potatoes in a saucepan of boiling water and boil until tender, about 20 minutes. Then, in a small mixing bowl, combine the lemon juice, red pepper, and salt, and onion slices, and coat them with the mixture. Stir well and set aside. Drain the potatoes to allow them to cool. Then heat the oil in a large skillet over low heat and add the cheese, turmeric, and heavy cream. Stirring constantly, continue cooking over a low heat until the cheese melts and the mixture is smooth. Add the cooked potatoes and gently stir to heat them through, about 5 minutes. Do not allow the mixture to boil or it will curdle. Transfer the potatoes to a serving bowl, sprinkle the onion mixture over the potatoes, and garnish with hard-boiled eggs. Remove the ceviche from the refrigerator, remove the cilantro sprigs and hot peppers from the mix, taste the fish ceviche and add additional salt if needed. Use a spoon to place the ceviche in each serving bowl. Add additional sliced onions to each bowl, add the diced or sliced hot peppers, and sprinkle with the finely chopped cilantro. Serve with the selected dressing ingredients on the side. How'd that all turn out? Well, it was fantastic. I loved it a ton. This time I did use the key limes I didn't use last time and they were very sharp, very, very acidic. I probably should have added a couple ice cubes as suggested in the recipe to help cut that, but still I loved it. I even wound up eating the habanero peppers in it and they were really hot, though not quite as hot as they'd be if I still have the seeds in them. Still, I loved it a lot. It doesn't need to be as spicy as that if you don't want it to be unless, you know, people are watching. But it was really great. I'm going to give the Peruvian ceviche a 5 out of 5 globes. We're going to be fighting over the little bit of leftovers on that one. But as for the papas a la huancaina, I loved it last time. I loved it this time. It was so great. Very monochromatic, but super, super, super delicious. And those pickled onions just really took it to a whole other place. I, I'm just crazy about it. You have to try that yourself. If you have Peruvian cheese, of course, it will be better. But that was just kind of an international version. So I'm going to give the papas a la huancaina 5 out of 5 globes as well a terrific dish from one of the world's greatest cuisines. So that does it for our little two-week stint here in South America. Next week, we go across the Pacific to have the food of the Philippines. Hope to see you then. And remember, if you'd like to see our streams live when they happen, follow us on Periscope or Facebook Live. Like and subscribe to be advised when these videos are posted. If you have any thoughtful feelings or helpful suggestions about the food that we're cooking, sound off in the comments. Remember, links to the original recipes, remember these aren't my recipes, are found in the About section. And tune in next time. Thanks for watching and happy eating.